everybody. Um, I'm filming this live and I do have family here. So uh, my apologies ahead of time if anything nutty happens. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit about uh, spindle spinning, kind of getting started and getting yourself going with a spindle. So here we are. Let me see, I grabbed, oh, just grabbed some fiber um, and pulled off a chunk because this is what's really comfortable for me to use is a chunk. And I have bats here and also a chunk of those is what's comfortable. Some people like to take strips, kind of pre-draft and sort of roll it a little bit to make it a little bit easier for them to use. Whatever works for you, it's gonna take some experimentation uh, and some thought to find out what works for you. And um, for me, like I said, it's this chunk. And so I have a whole bunch of spindles and I'm just showing you the top whirl versions. So just to keep from being confused, we're working with one type of spindle now instead of going with a whole bunch of different ones and running an overview. I've done that before, doing a little overview of different spindles, um, but today we're using the top whirls. So I am going to, actually that has a little bit of yarn on it already made. So I am going to save this one for later and we'll do a little bit of uh, plying with it. So let's see, I think I'm gonna choose, um, no, this guy. Let's see, we'll put the rest over there. And so this is how I get started. I sort of hold it like this. And can you see, I can get the hook. I'm running two cameras so that one is set up for YouTube later and one is set for you guys. So you'll see me doing both like that. Okay, I'm trying to get really fancy, two cameras. All right, so you can see that I had my hook in it and let's see. Tried to wear something sort of neutrally so you could be able to see. It's my new sweater from Goodwill. Do you like it? You see how I turn? I started turning. Actually. Clockwise. Can you see that? Can you see what it's doing? It's twisting. So this is how I start. And I'm not letting it go. I'm just doing some twisting. I am just working at making myself a leader. And you can kind of see up here, with this hand up here, that it is just twisting and creating and pulling it off. And that for me is the easiest way to start a leader. You can of course take a piece of yarn from something else that's already been made and make a leader out of that. But I like to have it all be the same. So now that I've got this, I sort of just take my hand and I twist it like that, just as a way of being able to have the yarn set on my hand um, without kind of making a mess out of it. And so you can see, I just hold it with my thumb, see, with my thumb, and wrap it around tight. I don't even put a knot in it, I just wrap it tight. And there are people that will tell you that if you are spinning clockwise, then your yarn needs to be, your thread, your yarn on the bottom of the shaft needs to be clockwise as well. And there are people that tell you if you're spinning clockwise that your yarn on the bottom has to be counterclockwise. And then there are people like me that will tell you to do whatever's most comfortable for you. So, now that I've got it, it's pretty good on there on the bottom up through the notch you see that notch in there and in through the hook that's it and now we're ready to go and when I'm teaching somebody at a show it's just park and draft so it's getting a bunch of twist into it stopping it kind of pushing it and then drafting out a little bit you can see that I this is fluffy and I'm pinching with my right hand 
letting it go. You can see the twist goes into it. And I can do that as many times as I actually have twist, and I know I don't have a lot of twist in this because I didn't have a big piece. So now I have a longer section here that can gather twist. Boop. Gather twist. Park it. And then I can draft out more. And I can keep drafting out. And I'm kind of haphazard sometimes when I do it, but you can see it's kind of thin. There's a black piece of the stuff there. Yeah, it's kind of thin, kind of hard to see. I probably should have wore a black sweater today. It'd be easier to see. All right. And then when you have too much for your arm to really handle, you wind on. And this is how you keep doing it again and again. And you work on the pre-draft again and again until you get good at it. And you'll know when you get good at it because you'll forget to park and draft. You'll just sort of um, feel it. Now, sometimes you kind of forced it to feel it. Uh, but, you know, if you wait until you're like really there you'll just be ready you'll be ready to do it and it'll go like this and just keep going so that is the gist of it this is the quick and dirty explanation i give it shows but there's one thing that i wanted to explain and i'm kind of doing something wrong here let's see not this at the moment but there's been something that I've been sitting here and doing kind of incorrectly I don't think there's too many people watching on the live right now but I'm sure at some point somebody's gonna be on today and they're gonna go well of course it's her arm and it's true my arm is incorrect and I do that a lot when I'm showing people which is unfortunate especially when I'm in a video this arm up here is incorrect so let's see this arm shouldn't be like that it should be down if my arm stays up like this it's going to start to bother me when I'm spinning so if my arm stays up like that I'm not gonna be happy spinning like that I'm gonna want to put my arm down so when I'm normally spinning, and this is like if I'm in a chair, I have a hard time spinning, and it's just because I don't have as much space. But normally, I spin with my arm down by my side because that is where it stays more comfortable. So this is the correct posture with your arm down. If you have it up and out, you are going to tire out your shoulder and your elbow a little bit too much. And so it can take like really minimal movement for your arm. So... There's that comment about the arm. And you can still spin longer amounts. You can kind of spin from around the corner and do all these fancy things. There's all these things you can do. But if you're just getting started spinning, it's not even something that you should think about at the moment. You should work on your spinning skills Work on getting to the point where you are comfortable dropping the spindle and not holding on to it and doing park and draft. And you're comfortable with your yarn. Now, you'll notice that my fiber supply is in my left hand and I'm pulling out with my right hand. And most people consider whichever hand you have your fiber supply in to be uh, your dominant hand usually so if I was doing long draw and if I was on the wheel and doing long draw it's my right hand that I have doing it for some reason on the spindle it's my left hand so don't get stuck in what hand is doing what if you are completely right-handed on the wheel but you want to use your left hand for your fiber supply and your spindle go for it if your left hand is your fiber supply and your wheel and you really want to use your right hand for fiber supply and spindle, 
do it. There's no rules as to which one is right or wrong. Some people just use the left-handed, right-handed designation to help you choose equipment or to show you how you're doing something. You can do it either way. So, let's see. There's that. And the last thing, I mean, if you're doing this and you're just chugging right along and you've got a whole bunch. Now, this isn't very much. And I wouldn't stop here usually. But... I would um, want to ply at some point, right? So I am going to make an Andean plying bracelet and I have a YouTube video for that already. And a blog post and a blog post and a craftsy video that has it in it. So uh, this is all over the place. So I'm not slowing down to show you guys because it is all over the place and I've done it before. So if you don't know how to do it, I'm going to ask that you look up one of the other resources that I already have for it. And it's called Andean Plying Bracelet. Mm, there. You can see I've got my two ends. And I'm just going to put a knot in them to join them. And because where that knot is, I can put my spindle in. Can you see where that is? Right like that. And so then I want to go in the opposite direction. And for me, I was spindle spinning in a clockwise direction. So now I want to apply in a counterclockwise. And again, there's no right or wrong for these. Sometimes crocheters and knitters will choose different directions. You choose what works for you and what works for the yarn that you want to make. And that's it, you just keep working at it. Now, can you see how it's plied out? There, you can kinda see. Let's get to the end of this and I will show you. So that's just it, it's in through the hook, you know, the notch, the hook, and it's all in the opposite direction of what you were spinning your original thread in. And I'm going to show you at the end because right now with all of this yarn on my arm, it does kind of mess it up and you can't really see super well what it all looks like. But this is the end. So let's see. You can see that it's been plied and the way I ply, can you see that it's got like a lazy loop in it? lazy loops so it is over plied just slightly right off of the spindle it looks over plied just slightly right off of the spindle but when i wash it and smack it a little bit it's going to be just about perfect so that is that and that is that in a nutshell so if you're looking to pick up a new little craft a little something to do. Uh, the kids can even do this. I, this is the first thing that I taught my kids to do was to spindle spin. And it was, you know, just small things with an inexpensive spindle, just something that, to get them started. So it's kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, I know at the moment, a lot of people are self-isolating. Uh, they're out of school or uh, do an online school. I know that's where I am. Um, work is at home, so that is, uh, working out hopefully okay, except I don't have as many festivals to work for, but, uh, this is a good way, you know, to keep into the fiber arts, to make your own yarn. For some people, this is a start. This is how they get started doing it. And for others, um, this is what they keep wanting to do. Some people, it's exclusively this. I, uh, I do both. I exclusively spindle spun for two years before I ever got a wheel. And then I was doing both and I still do both. I spindle spin and I wheel spin. I think I do probably more wheel spinning, but I really enjoy spindle spinning. When I travel someplace or if I'm going to a group, I usually bring spindles with me and that's what I work on. So 
Um, I think my live video died out. So it's just this YouTube video that's going to go up. And I hope that if you guys have questions that you ask down below, I'm not putting up a blog post for this one. So it's just the video. So pop on down below and ask any questions that you might have. Okay, everybody. Bye.